there's no way for me to get this video across in my normal meme format. So I'm just going to have to break it for now. You all know me as a meme lord of paladins, the resident Grinch. You know, the guy that doesn't like anything about this game, and trust me, I do. I do like things about this game, otherwise I wouldn't be playing it. But there are just some things in this game that I can't overlook, and I haven't been able to overlook for like the last 1500 hours I've been playing this fucking game. And if you've paid attention to the social media surrounding this game, you realize that for pretty much nobody else can either. So, I feel like I need to do this video. So I'm going to explain, as best I can, why I hate this game, and why I give hi such a hard time about it. Let's start off easy, with the rank system. It's pointless. It's fucking pointless. There's no other way to put it. It records your personal rating in a team-based game, which would be fine, but it doesn't take into account your personal performance. If I do 200,000 damage in 15 minutes and lose, I'll lose about 9 TP, fair enough. But if I do zero damage in 15 minutes and lose, I'll lose 9 TP. It doesn't matter if it was my fault or not, it doesn't matter if I was throwing or not. I will lose roughly the same amount of TP. There's no correlation between how well you do and how much TP you gain or lose. And if there is a correlation, I sure as hell haven't fucking noticed it. I've won 66% of my games, and every time I win, I win the same amount of TP. I win like 13, 14 TP. Every time I lose, I lose about 11 to 10 TP every fucking time, invariably. It doesn't matter how well or shit I did. But you know, you say, oh, it's just like any other competitive system, so you just grin and bear it. All right, well, I'll just play ranked anyway. However, the mode itself is marred by agonizing wait times. You wait more than you play in almost every single case. Let me give you the average scenario. You wait 12 minutes in the queue, then you draw for about 4 to 5 minutes. Then you have to load in the game for 1 minute because someone is going to crash. Then you sit in the spore room across the whole match for anywhere between 2 to 5 minutes. And then, finally, you get to play the game for between 6 and 15 minutes. No matter how you spin it, you are waiting more than you play. And for what? What's the incentive? What is the carrot on a stick to make me queue? Nothing! Nothing! The gold 5 skin, it's not prestigious, anyone can get it. The 100 win title, it's not prestigious, it doesn't mean anything. You could have won 100 games and lost 500. Oh, you're still Warbrow, congrats mate. The 200 win border, like, it's not prestigious at all unless you're bronze. If you can get 200 wins and never leave bronze, you're a fucking god. And you should wear that border with pride. Like, give us something that only the higher tier players can earn. Like, something that only the Masters and Grandmasters would ever get. Master, Grandmaster exclusive skins, yeah. Maybe people would actually start grinding for it. Instead, what do we have? The Grandmasters get crystals at the end of the split. And people on the top of every champion leaderboard get crystals at the end of every split. The latter of which is so easily exploitable that all you have to do is just throw your way into a gold rank. Then, sweat on the champion of your choice until you hit 99 TP, then throw on other champions until you're at zero, and then repeat the process until you have a 40 and 1 win loss. I bet you half of the people in the top 10 of every champion leaderboard aren't above platinum. The former of which is also fucking busted, by the way. The list of grandmasters in the game is not the list of the best players in the world. I'm sorry, but it isn't. These people, yeah, sure, they have above average skill. They also have a lot of spare time. And optionally, they play in LATAM to grind easy TP. It's so fucked that you could be a master with a negative win rate. If that's the bar we've set, why do we even want to grind? Even if we had the old borders back, there's no glory in it. The definition of being a master, a grandmaster, or anything is so poorly defined that it shouldn't be anything that we should wear proudly. If I kept playing ranked, yeah, I could hit grandmaster, but I don't want to wait more than I play for no fucking gain whatsoever. And I cannot wait for all the ignorant comments that say, Oh, you're only Diamond 1, that means you're just jealous of everyone that's better than you. <laughs> yeah, you caught me. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> what am I kidding? Ranked is fucking flawless, right? The Illusion of Choice. How many times have you been chastised for wanting to try out Sky or Moji in a casual? For trying out an unused talent? 
How many times have you thought to yourself, oh, I want to use A, but B exists and it completely eclipses A in all situations? Let's face it, this talent system wasn't that balanced when there were only three per champion. Now there's four and it hasn't gotten any better. Isn't it great that we're still suffering from the decisions of Cards Unbound 17 patches later? This is a chart of which champions have 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 viable talents. I've basically ruled out almost every talent that causes CC. There may be some controversial picks here, but notice the general trend towards having one or two viable talents out of four. That's most of the roster who are railroaded into a very simple choice, either because one talent is way better than the others, or the other three are so shit that you have to pick the fourth one. The champions that have no viable talents are those that are complete shit no matter what you choose. They're so weak that none of the choices available actually do anything for you. The theme here is simple. What talent gives the most burst? What talent lets me bypass the credit system? What talent gives me the most healing? Are the other three talents dog shit? Would I rather contract HIV or get a billion dollars? Some of these talents aren't even considered situational. They're throw picks. Freebooter, Dragonfire Lance, Wraith, Alternating Current, Worm Jets. Yes, I will not shut up about this. Worm Jets is a throw pick. Get over yourselves. Some champions have two talents that do the exact same thing, but one does it better, so you have to pick it. Solar Blessing over Cherish. Wakono's Wrath over Wakono's Curse. Smoke and Dagger over Surprise Attack. Discovery over Death Hastens. Some talents are actually good, but there's another talent that's so overpowered you have to pick it. Combat Medic. It's actually good, but it loses to Mega Potion in a healing situation. Aerial Assault has its use, but it loses to Rocket Barrage. Smolder and Guillotine, I guess, both lose to Yomi. I hope to god they don't add a fifth talent for every fucking champion. They couldn't even get three talents right. Now that's not to say that we haven't seen great improvement since OB64, but the only reason I bring this up is because some standout talents haven't seen a single change since OB64. Looking at you, Strix. Isn't it weird that Dragonfire Lance and Unauthorized Use have barely seen any change since their addition? Does that mean they're the same effectiveness? Have we just been sleeping on this god card? And then we've seen change that completely baffle the fuck out of me. Who authorized Davy Jones Locker? Okay, what? What the fuck's the point of this? You can't even make it any faster. What the hell is the point? Everyone's been clapping for high res about their recent anti-burst meta changes, but they aren't even close to fixing the problem. Okay, cool. You got rid of Hezwell Roll. Thank you very much. But you increased the punch distance and range so much that Defiant Fifth is now a brain dead talent. And now Andro has access to a 1400 burst that is perhaps even easier to land in Hensel Roll. Yeah, great. You deleted Spit Salvo from the game. You also deleted Salvo, just Salvo from the game. And Reign of Terror. Thank you. Thank you. Meanwhile, Moji's over there saying, can I play the game yet? Can I play the fucking game yet? I know this segment was called The Illusion of Choice, but it kind of blends into how glacial high res are being at balancing right now, and it's not good. I know people are like, oh, you can't make too many changes at once. It will fuck up the meta. It will fuck up the game. But you don't have the luxury of waiting. You've waited long enough. You've made the bad decisions that led you to this corner. You've got to fix it. Let me bring up Strix again. Your only response to this unauthorized use bullshit was to nerf the base flare. So you've now made a skill that is useless on its own, but overpowered when it's talented. That is a game design failure. That is like a perfect failure. I don't see how you could have done it any fucking worse. But it's okay, you've given yourselves, what, 13 months from the day I'm recording this? Yeah, you've got 13 months to fix the game. Yeah, all right, yeah, I believe you. You can fix it in 13 fucking months. By then we're gonna have 60 fucking champions, aren't we? Six new champions. We already at 39 and you can't balance them. What's 45 gonna be like? Jesus Christ. The map design and their implementation. It's fucked. The maps I have a massive problem with have the same problem. And no, it isn't because there's a lack of rooftops. I do well on maps without rooftops as well as those with rooftops. Fuck you very much. They are overly restrictive. They are filled with invisible barriers. They depict a vast, expansive landscape, but set the skybox at 20% of their height. They have large buildings, but don't let you even try to go over them. There's no options. You can't flank. They have tons of jagged edges that you get stuck on by just walking against a wall. 
walking against a wall. They may have super heavy walls. Walls where if you touch them, you sink rapidly. It's split stone, jag, magistrate's archives, stone keep, they have these walls, as well as some other maps. Having said all that, fuck frozen guard, fuck ice mines, fuck fish market, and fuck timber mill, especially the new one. They feel distinctly as if they were made decades before the other maps, which don't have most of these problems. But you know what? I could give these maps a pass anyway, because Siege is a good game mode. Let's talk about Onslaught. I've already talked about Magistrate's Archives. It's ruined by the horrible amount of super heavy walls. Almost every fucking wall in the middle room is super heavy. It's like they didn't even fucking try. It's also ruined by the fact that the edge of the map towards the telescope is so close to the balcony that your environmental kills can be ruined. Why is the wall so close? Eevee could just blink back for fuck's sake. Look how far this fucking landscape stretches out and we're not allowed to go this far out. Keep your arms and legs in the vehicle at all times and also don't look, don't hear, don't smell, don't touch anything. But the real shitter in Onslaught is Marauder's Port. The, wow, they phoned this one in. All the budget must have went into the Kraken. First of all, let's look at these spawn doors. They are way too close to each other, and there's two of them that face the same fucking direction. You know what this means? You can spawn trap very easily in this fucking map. Next, have you even tried walking against half of the walls in this map? Especially all the buildings. I don't even know how none of these got caught in playtesting. I just, I just want to walk along this fucking wall. I just want to walk. I'm trying to access the lower fucking level of the map and it's not letting me. There's a fucking hook. And who thought it was a good idea to have rooftop physics at ground level? If you step on this and you're not a mobile champion, you're just going to slide down. Oh, we can't forget that the skybox is really fucking low. Yeah, great. And the final kicker, the point doesn't even work properly. It's a fu- It's a- it's a rectangle. It's a fucking rectangle. How am I not capturing this? I'm standing inside a fucking rectangle. It's like one of the simplest shapes. How? How is the f How? And I know most of these problems can be applied to some of the other maps, but I'm just trying to rag on Marauder's Port because it's the most recent one, and you'd expect them to get better over time. And you'd be right if this wasn't high res. <laughs> Team Deathmatch and their insistence on creating content for it. Fuck this fucking mode. I don't recall many people asking for it, but regardless, I am insulted at how poorly put together this mode and all its maps, the most recent one being an exception, are. It's like they didn't even bother researching any other FPS games. All you had to do was look. Don't even tell me no one in the office has played Call of Duty once. 
Alright, let's look at Trade District. It's a horrible fucking map. It's designed to be a square map, but for some reason they put the Great Wall of fucking China straight down the middle and cut it in half. No, you can't fly over it. There's an invisible fucking wall. Now, that would be okay, but here's the thing. One side has more options than the other one! The team that spawns on the high ground and keeps it has more options to move around and flank than the other team. And it's all because of one simple thing. They didn't put any fucking stairs here! There are several situations where your team spawn just sucks so much dick and you can't do anything about it. The enemy team have more ways to poke you than you have to poke them. Abyss suffers from the same problems, except it's not as visible. There's no giant wall. The entire map takes place on two elevations. Assuming you aren't vertically mobile, you have five ways to cross from the top to the bottom, but to go the other way, you have two. A jump pad and a ramp on opposite ends of the map. Are we really saying go fuck yourself to every champion that can't fucking fly? Yes, I know the ult charge is on the lower elevation, but I do not believe that the ult charge can change the game enough that would warrant sitting on the lower elevation. Now, this is a thing in most TDM maps. Like, what TDM map apart from, like, Nuketown is built symmetrically? Even that one be is barely symmetrical. They're never built symmetrically. Of course they aren't. But you know what other FPS games have that Paladins doesn't? A fucking working spawn algorithm. I cannot recall to the nearest 10,000 the number of games I have had where the spawns just don't move all game. It takes some extreme flanking to actually get them to move, and sometimes even that won't get another budge. I don't have a clue how they coded this shit. I have had an entire game last across this bridge, and the enemy team knew that we couldn't do anything without coming closer to them. We had no choice but to do so, they just kept hiding around the fucking corner, and given that matchmaking's a piece of shit, my team just kept dying. But the game, instead of changing the spawns to break the stalemate, it wasn't even a stalemate, it was just a massacre, it didn't change our spawn. We just spawned in the same fucking place again and again. We were just feeding the enemy that knew how to game the spawns. It was basically a spawn trap. My attempts to flank ended in failure, and the game would not change my fucking spawn. I couldn't do anything. I was playing fucking Binary Star. I'm dead fucking serious. This is an affront to all the developers that actually try. Oh, don't worry. There's shit the other way, too. I've had games where I get a quad kill, but then I'm greeted by all the four people that I just killed who spawn in front of me, who then run me over. Why are they spawning so fucking close to me? There's like one wall separating us. I have seen people I've killed two seconds ago spawn in my line of sight. I've also been subject to the reverse. I've spawned in front of the guy that's just fucking killed me. To tell you the truth though, they are starting to understand how to make maps for this mode. Dragon Arena released this patch 1.8 and it's actually okay. There's no fucking imbalance between the sides. There's no high ground, low ground. The focus is actually in the center for once. It actually flows well. However, there's just one problem. Why the fuck is the skybox this fucking low? Look how high those towers go. You're telling me I can't even go halfway of halfway of this tower. Right, in summary, just just make the spawns better. I, I'm so tired of having TDM games only take place in 40% of the fucking map for five minutes. And also, give all your maps a good scrub, because they all have jagged walls and super heavy walls that need to go. But... These are the people that won't patch the rooftops. I'm just saying, if the rooftops have been in the game for two years, it's no longer a bug or an exploit, it's a fucking feature. The bots. Holy fuck, the bots. I cannot ever accurately describe the pain and despair I feel when I have to play a game with or against a bot. Just watch these bots twirl in place. These two players left my game within the first two minutes and they never came back. They might have crashed, their house probably caught fire, they went into the fucking labor, I don't care. They're not here now and the game has given me these as replacements. They can't fucking move! Whenever I get a bot in my game, I just want to fucking die. I just want to disconnect. I want to become a bot myself. Having a bot is such a severe handicap that at high elo, it's a death sentence. Why bother playing? We're gonna lose at least two points because that guy that crashed is taking forever to load back in. He's gotta open your anti-cheat, then your launcher, then your patching service, then your game, then load all the assets again, then play the first two minutes with missing textures and broken spawn doors, lagging like fuck. If I played on a potato, I probably wouldn't fucking bother loading back in either. It's just agony trying to load back in in this game. Despite all that, in the heat of the moment, I can't sympathize with that. I'm trying to play Paladins. I wanna have fun. 
When someone leaves or crashes, it doesn't matter which, it's over. I gotta wait eight minutes at least because there's no way to mercy kill a match anymore. 40 patches ago, there was a surrender button, but that got taken out. Why? Why did it get taken out? It was our only way out of a match. It was going to complete shit. Your bots are simultaneously so dumb that they can't do any damage at all, Bomb King, and so ascended and woke that they can do things that the human players can't. Eevee, Shaolin, Terminus, Genos. Furthermore, if someone disconnects and is replaced by a bot, that bot will purchase a lot of items with credits that player doesn't own. So actually, disconnecting can be used as an exploit to gain more items. And if you've got a fucking SSD, yeah, you can get back in the game within 30, 45 seconds tops, because, you know, easy anti-cheat takes a fucking eternity to turn on. It's not fun trying to carry a robot that can't even shoot properly. The way information is given to the player. Now, this is not something anyone really complains about. This is something that appears to only piss me off. Which probably says something about my character, but I still think it's fucking wrong. I would absolutely hate this game if I fucking came across it now. If I were a new player now, of all the games I have played in English, this is one of the most arcane, cryptic, unhelpful fucking games I've ever come across. Almost everything that isn't the basic PRESS THIS TO DO THIS instruction was not taught by the game. It was learned through trial and error or by someone shouting at me. This has only recently become one of my biggest issues with the game, partly because of another game, MapleStory 2. In MapleStory 2, there was recently an incident called Petgate. To summarize, there's a pet leveling system in that game, where you can tame pets and fuse them with other pets to level them up. This makes the pet stronger and do more damage. However, the damage they did was so small that people were like, ugh, what's the point? Not worth my time. We've got other things to be doing. We've got gear to grind. So basically, most players universally ignored the system. Unfortunately for them, it was discovered and revealed to the general public that pets are in fact one of the most important factors to a player's DPS. A fact that was supposedly kept secret by the top players who knew this fact from the prior Korean release of MapleStory 2. This caused an outrage both at the top players and Nexon for not making this information clear. Nowhere in the game does it tell you that a pet gives you more damage. This made me realize how the same thing is happening in Paladins. The amount of information that is never conveyed to the player in this game is fucking ridiculous. The basic tutorial teaches you the bare minimum, and some elements of this game are never explained at all. Lucky for you, I've got a list of some of the worst defenders. Where in the game is the comeback mechanic explained? Where in the game is the item shop explained? You wouldn't even know about it if there wasn't a UI prompt telling you to press I. In fact, it even tries to make you not press it because it turns on auto buy for you. Where in the game is the relevance of kill streaks explained? Where in the game is the effects of silence and cripple explained? All these skills say they silence and cripple, but what the fuck does it do? It doesn't tell you. Well, some of you might say, oh, just go into a game and once you get silenced or crippled, you'll find out. But what if I'm a new player? No one owns these champions that can silence and cripple. So why would I want to buy these champions if I don't know what their effects do? I have to wait until someone happens to buy the champions and then uses their effects against me and then I have to work it out. You can't even use the shooting range because none of the bots move or use abilities. So if I use silence and cripple, it's not going to do anything. I still don't know what it fucking does. Why is the answer to everything go to the wiki? It shouldn't be. That's a horrible solution. Where in the game is diminishing returns explained? Why do I have to go Go Google a calculator. Go Google a fucking formula. Okay, so now I'm stacking reload speed, but there's no diminishing returns on this? Why? Wait, why is there a hard cap? Why isn't it going over 60%? Where in the game does it tell you there's a cap on reload speed? Does rejuvenate reply before or after cauterize? Is it additive or multiplicative? Why doesn't it work in dead zone? Isn't that just a 100% healing reduction? Shouldn't Rejuvenate take 30% of that off? Where in the game are the loadouts explained? The tutorial doesn't even fucking teach you about them. And I bet you, some players play this game and then quit without ever making a fucking loadout. Don't underestimate the IQ of the average player. Where are the patch notes? Why is there an option in the game to view them, 
but it shows nothing and never has shown anything. This button has not worked since it was added. Why do I have to go on the internet to find the fucking patch notes? There's not even a launcher anymore that I can click for the patch notes. I have to go to your website. If I'm stealthed and I'm revealed, am I visible? I asked this because my model is still see-through, so I must be stealthed, right? If I'm CC immune, why can Pip still chicken me? Why is Midnight affected by CC reduction if there's no debuff icon on my screen? What counts as CC in this game? It's like there's level 1 CC reduction, level 2 CC reduction, true CC reduction, true CC, CC piercing, CC life insurance, CC embezzlement, CC identity theft. How many fucking turns are there that aren't explained in this fucking game? Why does it say Maldam? but applies venom damage over time. Why is venom capitalized if it's a thing in the game? Why does it say Cassie fires projectiles? She doesn't, she's a hit scan. What's the difference between being untargetable and being immune to all harmful effects? Can I be both at once? You can't even target things in this game. What the hell does untargetable mean? Why don't I know who's a bot on my team? Look, I could, I could keep going. I could keep going, but I've already made my point. Let me wrap this up. Let me draw an analogy. People got incensed over the fact that Destiny 1 store it was pretty much removed from the game. It was put online in this grimoire that you had to read on the internet. And people were like, why didn't you just put the story in the fucking game? Why are you making me go log on and read the story? Now, imagine if they just removed all the tooltips and definitions from that game as well and put it in the grimoire. You should not expect your customer to frequent your website, your YouTube, your Twitch, your Mixer, your subreddits, your esports news, just to get basic information that should be readily available to everyone who plays your game. It is not the job of your fucking esports casters to explain the comeback mechanic 10 times a day. We, we often talk about combat mechanic right and half combat mechanic. What's the difference between those two? Full comeback mechanic, you're going to be getting 4% every single in-game tick as opposed to the 3% that you get with a standard. And when you have half-back comeback mechanic, it's going to be 4% every other tick. So it's going to get a little faster here for Fnatic. They have to spend a little less time the G2, but it's nowhere near as easy as it would be if you have that comeback mechanic fully enabled. There's certainly more I could go on about, but this video is approaching half an hour. It's a bitch to edit, and it's a bigger bitch to upload, so I'm gonna cut it here. To everyone that wonders why I continue making content for this game, despite me having rarely said a positive thing about it in the last half a year, I don't know either. Not exactly. Maybe it's because I know that this game could be the best in its genre. I see so many videos in my recommendations about Overwatch dying, shitting the bed, what have you. You are sitting on a mother load but you just don't let yourself reap the rewards. You have potentially the best FPS in the world under your care, but you keep making vital, basic mistakes. I joined this game when Damba was new. Drogos could fly, he could ski, he was fast, he wasn't obese. I know how amazing this game feels at its best, but I can't remember the last time I had that much fun. You have an important year ahead. We have an important year ahead. Don't fuck it up. Stop pumping out content because you clearly cannot keep up. Just stop, fix what we have, and keep going. You're in jeopardy of nuking the last relevant IP that you own. And if the reason you keep making content over bug fixes is because of money, well, that was your fault to begin with. You dug your own grave, and I'm sorry about that. But this game doesn't need to die. I mean no offense to any developer individually, by name, or anything. All my criticism is directed at you as a collective unit, under the name High res Evil Mojo, whatever. When I use pictures, videos, and sound clips of any of you, it's not a personal attack. I'm just trying to get a point across. Believe me, if I wanted to personally attack someone, I'd make it very clear that I was personally attacking them. But there's no reason to. The faces of Hyres are all friendly, they're all charismatic, they all do their jobs. I'm sure they do, but there's some failure and some point of this system that needs to be addressed. This game can be great, so fucking let it be that way.